Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Russ with RWGResearch.com, and I know you guys are probably wondering what is going on with the EPG. Well, it's been sitting here since I've got it done with pressure in it. I think it's a 20 psi. It's been like that for a long time um, since you saw me finish the primary here. So, what I'm going to do in this video is explain to you how I'm going to do what I'm going to do and why I'm kind of working the way I'm doing this. Um, it kind of seems backwards. You guys are probably like, what is going on? Um, so I'm going to explain it to you. Basically, in order to process the gas with this unit or one similar, I need to make sure that the gas is being processed. In order to process the argon, I need to buy 750 nanometer LEDs. They are quite expensive. I do not want to waste the money if I can't get the device to function. So I'm going to get it to, to function with hydrogen and oxygen first. Um, so I want to be able to learn how to, and I will show you guys once I get this all set up. Um, I want to make sure that I can properly build a VIC, <coughs> excuse me, a VIC transformer. Okay, and that is because I need to be able to make a high voltage with a basically no current flow and also it's it's almost like a stagnant high voltage field there's like no electron movement it's literally just oscillating really tightly just like this on both sides of that capacitor which would be the inside of this processor the stainless steel you see inside here so why am I going backwards doing all this stuff okay whenever you process the hydrogen and oxygen and really you're mainly um, working with the oxygen. Um, a little bit of the hydrogen, but ma mainly the oxygen. And the reason is, is there is, um, you have to have between six and eight electrons to covalently link up the water molecule when you ignite it. Um, so basically, if you take a HHO cell of some sort and you burn the gas, it turns back into water right away. It's a water vapor right away. And it it produces a certain amount of thermal energy. Um, if you process the gas, if you strip away enough electrons from the oxygen and you can burn that gas after you do that, if you have less than four electrons left in the, I believe, the outer valence ring of the oxygen, then you can increase your thermal explosive energy which is what Stan refers to it as, we'll just leave it at that and I should be able to actually burn the gas after I process it okay and turn this device on and if it's working properly I will see the flame change it will be more 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 heat, more energy, more explosive, whatever um, if that does not occur then I I basically know that I'm not processing the argon correctly. So that's why I'm working backwards. I have to get this device to work. In order, in order to make sure that this device works would be to burn the oxygen and hydrogen and see the difference when the device is on and when the device is off. Um, once I do that, then we'll start with the argon. Now, uh, right now, the EPG is still soldered together. I have not unsoldered this. I will be unsoldering this. I will be putting spacers in here and I will be gluing this nice and, uh, uh, you know, seal it up nice so that the conductive copper here is not touching anything else. So you actually have a coil here. Right now you just kind of have a dead short. Um, and I don't like that. I think that there's a special property with the copper and I think there's a special property with being able to isolate these. Um, right now I've been working on the divider plates um, and measuring out the wire and once I get the divider plates I'm having my step cousin who is able to use a water jet and he is um, I'm probably gonna have to pay him a little but it's not gonna be very much it's gonna be wor well worth my time um, I actually was gonna let you guys somebody who was volunteering to cut all those out but I tell you what it's if I can get this done for 20 bucks even even less than 50 bucks it will be worth all of our time um, because there's almost a hundred of those plates 
and some of them actually have different notches cut in with holes so that I can put this brass rod around the inside so I can do my bus bars and it's going to save so much time and effort um, Mr. Bill Williams himself is finishing up the CAD drawings I sketched it up in Google SketchUp and I sent it to him and he's drawing it up in the proper format so that when my step cousin gets it he can stick it right in the water jet and let her rip um, I'm going to order the plastic soon it's probably going to be a thin ABS type plastic um, I might look for something else, but I think that would work just fine. And then I'm going to figure out what kind of glue I'm going to use on the EPG. But that's it. I'll see what time I'm at here. Oh, I'm only at five minutes. i got another ten minutes to talk to you guys. Um, I don't really have anything else to say, so I'm going to let you guys go. But I wanted to inform you what's going on in the process that I'm doing this. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I, I think that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, I'll try to explain it to you better. But uh, I think I'm okay on that. Um, that's it. I'm going to let you guys go. Russ with RWG Research. Making progress. Things are coming along. Um, I will be on the Smart Scarecrow Show if you didn't see my other video. See my previous video. I'll be on Smart Scarecrow Show next Thursday. I'll link it in the description so you can make sure you get there on time. If not, you can see the rerun. It will be a live show. You can ask questions live. Um, it's a pretty cool show. It's been doing it for, I think, about three years or so. And uh, um, Sterling Allen is going to be there, and he does his presentation. It's really neat. It's a pretty cool little show. It gives you the insight on the energy community. And uh, I don't know. I think it would be interesting. So I'll let you guys do that. Peace. I'm out. You guys have a good one. See ya. Oh, there's lots of stuff going on at the forums. Make sure you check it out. Oh, and while I'm talking about informational videos, I did update my website. I told you guys I would. Go, I was going to tell you when I did that. I did that. If you go to uh, rwgresearch.com, you click on My Open Projects. The very first link is Myers Water Fuel Cell Tech, Tech I think it's called. Click on that. And halfway down that page you will see four new links with lots of information I put all the patents on there all the information you need to know is on there I've done a water fuel cell update with the drawings of my new cell that I'm trying to be have made um, it's being made but it's in the progress because it's being done for free um, by another family member that lives in Florida so it's slow but that's why I built this other test cell um, the EPG webpage has been updated with new photographs of this. And what else is on there? Um, the hydrogen gas gun, gas processor, it is on there as well. Um, in case you guys are wondering, these two coils, this coil and these two coils, are actually the VIC here. Um, this is kind of one of the first versions, I believe, and then later Stan built just a gas processor. Uh, which is not like this, and it is in the patents. Um, it's actually drawn up in the patents. Um, another thing before I go is a lot of you are really concerned about the LED. You know, Stan says laser energy. Yes, I do believe he probably used a real laser at one point in time, but then figured that he just needs the light energy. Um, and I actually think that the LED not being so focused is good because you want to spread the light out. I know that the, the laser would reflect inside the chamber, but I think that if you have a more overall broadband, just light shining in this thing, you'd be better off. And I believe that's what Stan figured out. Um, and you can actually read in the book called, uh, it's on my documents page, it is uh, The Birth of a New Technology book. If you read through that book, you will see where Stan talks about LEDs, arrays, he talks about the voltage drop. He talks about the milliamp drop. You can tell he actually says red LEDs. He actually states that in his um, in his work. So, you know, the the information's there. You just, you just have to find it. I'm I'm working on trying to putting put it together. Um, actual equipment with Stan's patents drawings, so that you can see how close the drawings are to the real the real equipment. Um, that's something that's gonna take me a while to do. Uh, but I do want to do that so that you guys can see the, see the real stuff and see the, the drawings and see how close they are. Um, again, that is going to be a while. 
um, it's going to take a while to do that. So, all right, I'll leave you guys. Peace. Have a good one. God bless you all. Later.